The Prime Minister of Lebanon says he can't find a way through his country's troubles and is handing in his resignation after nearly two weeks of anti-government protest. In a televised speech, Saad Hariri said he came to a dead end faced with a crisis that's plunged the country into turmoil. I call on all Lebanese people to put Lebanese interests and the security of Lebanon and the protection of the civilians of Lebanon before anything else. Regarding all my partners in the political field, our responsibility is how to protect Lebanon and stop any problems reaching Lebanon. Our responsibility is improving the country's economy, and this chance should not be lost. All right, we've got Becky Anderson in Beirut. Becky, things have escalated over the past week. I mean, just a couple of days ago, you had the governor telling you that the country is just days away from an economic crisis or collapse. You've got the prime minister resigning. You've got Hezbollah leadership warning of a possibility of civil war on the ground if the power vacuum isn't filled. What is the next step here? Well, that is the great unanswered <laughs> question <laughs> this hour. In the end, he said, try as you might, he hit a roadblock. There was nothing more he could do. And so in submitting his resignation in front of a, a portrait of his late father and former Prime Minister Rafiq Hariri, Saad Hariri handed the protesters here who have demonstrated against his government, as you rightly point out, for nearly two weeks now, a victory. But only a victory of sorts. They demanded his resignation loudly and they got it abruptly the defense minister telling me in just the last few hours that it was unexpected and uncoordinated but for many here sardariri is just a symptom of what is a much deeper issue they accuse the entire sectarian political elite of endemic state corruption that over decades has crippled this country's finances. And as you rightly point out, the central bank governor telling me here in an exclusive interview that without immediate action towards a political solution, Lebanon is just days away from economic collapse. The point is that the protesters wanted to see the end of the lot of them and, and, and moving to a sort of transitional phase to a civilian government. But this hour, we are nowhere close to that becoming a reality. What Lebanon now faces is a political vacuum which, though sadly uh, not unfamiliar in this country, could be extremely dangerous. So in announcing his intention to resign, Saad Hariri said, and I quote, I call on all Lebanese to ensure that Lebanon's interest and safety, the protection of civil peace and the prevention of economic deterioration prevail over everything else. The irony is that his resignation could actually deepen this latest unrest and exacerbate this economic yeah. crisis. As I said at the beginning of this, there really isn't any yeah. real answer to this real economic and security yeah. crisis here in Lebanon at present. I mean, exactly. You've got the economic issue because I know banks are still currently closed, um, which of course brings in a whole range of issues for the population. But at the same time, you've got the current leadership mm. and you're talking about sectarian politics here. They've got to make a decision. Are they going to go for elections? Are they going to put in you know, an interim government? And this is going to happen really quickly because mm. protest action is probably going to continue, one would expect. And don't forget, it took, <laughs> took nine months for Saad Hariri to put this last government together. The wrangling in this sort of what's known as this confessional setup, this sectarian setup, when everybody wants a piece of the pie and everybody's got competing um, issues. And, and many of these ministries have an enormous amount of money, uh, and that money is what the protesters say has been, it's just been looted effectively from this country, and it is why they want to see the end of that. So they will have a caretaker government here in place uh, going forward but you know it, this country historically has found it incredibly difficult to put governments together and that has been at times when the economy has been in good shape relatively good shape compared to now uh, and and the security situation hasn't been as bad as it is now so yeah it's it's a very it's, it's a very very difficult situation look behind me tonight uh, you hear the sort of soundtrack to these protests Eleni once again booming music a sense of celebration that which we've heard now for the last 12 days but there are not nearly as many people on the streets uh, and we've seen violent scuffles in some parts of beirut today some people clearly very fed up with the fact that they can't get to work 
Uh, they need to work. They can't get through uh, some of these barricades. So, it, you know, it, it, this is a real... I mean, to, to, to use the term a crossroads is a real understatement yeah. at this point. It is fractured, it is divisive, it is polarised, and none of that is going to be improved probably in the days, months or uh, days, weeks or months ahead.